of the last hours of summer. Brainwashing, hypnosis, and even surgical manipulation of the human brain has all been researched thoroughly by the CIA. To provide an objective record of the subject's behavior, she's filmed before treatment and again after treatment. And the two films placed side by side. Notice how the subject before treatment in the picture on the right holds onto the chair as she moves. Notice the difference in posture. The greater effort required to rise from the chair. The longer time needed to complete the simple task. He would uh, cut the skin, take the skin flap back, roll it back. He would then literally remove the skull, the top part of the skull. The patient all this time is under a local anesthetic, completely conscious. From my own point of view, the most unexpected uh, finding was to discover that an elect a mild electrical current applied to the surface of the brain causes a patient to have a memory from his own past sometimes. Good. Make it one volt, please. One volt? Yeah. Is it one volt? I heard what one sounded volt. like an orchestra playing, and I asked the nurse where it was coming from, Where's, and she said, what music? And I said, well, that music, and then it stopped. And then I stimulated it again, you remember, and asked you about it, and you hummed it. Will you hum it now? You remember it? Yes. Go ahead. Da 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 MK Ultra was one program, a series of programs that came out of the CIA to experiment with different types of mind control using drugs, using electroshock, using insulin shock, and, and other techniques. I think that the goal for those people who planned the program was very straightforward. It was an attempt to figure out a way to interrogate people and to learn how to protect their own agents against control by others. If you put someone in a position of being disabled by not feeding them or not allowing them to sleep or overwhelming them with sound, if you use massive shock treatment and you give people massive doses of drugs such as PCP or mescaline or amphetamines or LSD, and if you put them in periods of darkness where they can't predict from one minute to another what is going to happen next, so they're always dreading, there's no consistency to sort of what's going to happen, anybody can be put in a position of being open open to brainwashing. Newman Cameron was probably the foremost psychiatrist of his time in the 1950s. He was using high-tech sound techniques. He was using multiple kinds of loop recorders to force people to listen to recorded messages 24 hours a day for weeks on end to basically destroy people's thinking patterns. surgic acid into the vein and he patted me on the shoulder and said now there lassie we'll see you later and i started to feel very frightened and the fright became a terror and i sort of began throwing myself from one side of the room to the other i didn't know what to do to stop this feeling it felt like my bones were melting that i was um, I just didn't know who I was anymore. This is 
not just uh, break-ins of people's homes. It's not just invasions of privacy by illegal wiretapping. This is uh, an invasion of a person's mind. But uh, that is about as uh, profound uh, an injury, uh, except for loss of life, that the government can impose. This was a, a post-Nazi program, if you will. It was a, uh, an Americanization. I've often made the statement, and I still make it flippantly. The Nazis didn't lose the war. They just had to move. Now it's 50 years later. Now they're much more clever, much more sophisticated. They have a lot more money to spend. Manchurian candidate James Holmes has been formally charged with 24 counts of murder. A tragic mass killing that left 12 people dead and 58 people wounded still leaves many questions unanswered as eyewitness reports continue to emphasize that there were two killers, two gas masks found, gas canisters thrown from multiple directions, an unexplainable blood splatter trail leading back to the movie theater, and an obviously drugged out James Holmes who couldn't even speak his own name at his first court appearance. As we first suggested in our breaking video the day of the shooting, James Holmes has been exhibiting classic signs of an MK Ultra subject who has been psychologically compromised in order to stage a politically motivated mass murder. Although shocking for many people to think about, we need to ask, what would be the motive for the federal government to stage such a massive cover-up and brutal killing spree? Further adding fuel to the fire, the Independent broke over the weekend that James Holmes, a former University of Colorado graduate student of an elite neuroscience program, had been under the psychological care and watch of a psychiatrist who was part of a campus threat assessment team. She was also a former employee of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs from 2008 to 2010. James Holmes is reminiscent of many Manchurian candidates of years past, including Sirhan Sirhan, who was convicted for the assassination of United States Senator Robert F. Kennedy. Just like Holmes, many believe Sirhan had been psychologically programmed and his mind wiped after the killing. To this day, Sirhan has no memory of the RFK assassination or aftermath. Other suspected MK Ultra subjects, such as Ted Kaczynski, have all been associated with secretive government programs. A considerable amount of circumstantial evidence suggests that Theodore Kaczynski, also known as the Unabomber, participated in CIA-sponsored MK Ultra experiments conducted at Harvard University from the fall of 1959 through the spring of 1962. Also, over the weekend, according to the Denver Post, Colorado's real-life shooting had imitated a training exercise at Parker Medical School the same day of the killing. According to the Post, the tragedy that played out in the Aurora movie theater was ironically paralleled as a classroom learning experience in a medical school in Parker the same day as the real one. While the morning of this tragedy is public, the investigation into it is getting more secretive. A local judge has amended a gag order preventing authorities from releasing information on James Holmes, the 24-year-old suspect arrested in connection with the mass shooting. It now also applies to the place he studied, the University of Colorado, Denver. This comes after reports that Holmes sent a package containing a notebook with threatening messages to a professor at the school. On Monday when he first appeared in court, the university received a suspicious package but it would not confirm the contents nor its sender. That huge development in the Colorado movie theater shooting word now that suspect James Holmes may have mailed a notebook detailing his deadly plot to the University of Colorado. GMA weekend anchor Dan Harris has been following every development of this story, joins us now from Aurora this morning. And good morning to you, Dan. Josh, good morning to you. The investigation into the lethal plot allegedly hatched in the apartment building right behind me is heating up this morning with that disturbing new discovery. Overnight, while the windows at the apartment of suspect James Holmes were fixed up and people were allowed back into a place formerly rigged with booby traps, behind the scenes, investigators were busy analyzing a notebook believed to be written by Holmes, which ABC News has learned was mailed to the University of Colorado, where Holmes had been a student until dropping out last month. 
Fox News is reporting the spiral notebook was mailed to a psychiatrist at the university and that it contains, quote, full details about how he was going to kill people, drawings of what he was going to do in it, drawings and illustrations of the massacre. They're going to start going through it, looking for pre-planning, motivation, purchase of weapons. One of the sources who spoke to Fox indicated the package arrived on campus on July 12th, more than a week before the massacre, but wasn't found until this past Monday during a search of the mailroom, raising questions about whether the massacre could have been avoided. Campus officials call that report inaccurate and say the package was delivered by the post office on the same day that it was found. Those officials are refusing to say whether Holmes was seeing a psychiatrist, although they insist they handled his case correctly all along. To the best of our knowledge at this point, we, we did everything that we, that we think we should have done. Due to all of the evidence discussed, and the fact that Holmes is apparently not actually seen in the theater before or after the shooting, it is to my belief that someone else was in the theater doing the shooting, while Holmes waited outside in a trance or drug-induced state waiting for police to arrive. The reason why Holmes began acting so strange just a few months before the attack is likely because this is when he began playing the role of the patsy, as evidence against him began being put into place to ensure that when the crime was committed, he could be painted as a killer by the media very easily, and all the details could simply fall into place. Details like his gun registration, weapons purchases, the booby-trapped apartment, were all likely done prior by the CIA or the FBI. The notebook was put into play after his arrest, as he continues to be set up as the lone gunman guilty of the crime. The second person of interest, with the goatee, that was seen opening the emergency exit to the theater was likely his handler, who allowed the real shooter inside to commit the murders. Prior to the attack, Holmes was also apparently obsessed with a movie trailer he saw called Suffocator of Sins, in where a character similar to Batman is killed, but his role assumed by the person who finds him. This could also be reported as a ploy to make it seem more believable that he actually committed the crime, or as a publicity stunt by producer Diggity Dave. Batman spin-off director questioned by James Holmes before shooting. Hi, I'm Stephanie Bauer for Holly Scoop. A Batman spin-off director, Diggity Dave, a former MTV star, claims the alleged shooter in the Aurora, Colorado movie theater massacre called him two times a month prior to the tragedy. According to the Batman director, the conversations happened in June and had to do with the specific details of his upcoming spin-off film called The Suffocator of Sins. The director tells KNX's 1070's Charles Feldman he kept pressing if I could give him more information on the story. He wanted to know how many people Batman kills, he wanted to know if it was selective killing, does he make a list of people he wants to kill, or is it a mass body count? James Holmes calls MTV star. Yeah, I go, what, you know, what's your name, man? And he said, my name is James Holmes. Hit my rides, Vicky Dave, claiming the suspected Colorado gunman called him twice one month prior to the theater shooting to discuss Dave's upcoming film, The Suffocator of Sins, a movie described as a sick and dark twist to the Batman movie. The part where he opens fire, that Batman type figure, he wanted to know how many people you know, does Batman kill. Though he can't prove it, Dave tells KNX 1070 in Los Angeles, Holmes phoned him and that he was obsessed with violence. And he was just like, man, that's the one thing that I'm disappointed. Like, it should have been a bigger gun. Now, there are those who are wondering why come forward now, and maybe it's because the movie is set to premiere this Friday. So then, why would the government want to set James Holmes up? What could be the end goal that they were hoping to accomplish? What would be the point of brainwashing a bright university student to commit the worst mass shooting in the history of the United States? And why has there been an increase in shootings after the events of July 20th? It's time to take a look into the possible motives of the crime.
Although at the time of this video being made, the trial and investigation into the happenings of July 20th are still undergoing, it is important that independent research into the event continues as new details slowly come to light. We have shown that the media and news reports continue to announce that Holmes acted alone, and the official story remains that there were no other parties involved in the massacre. Although there is little evidence proving that James was even in the theater before, during, or after the crimes, major media are still reporting that he is guilty before the trial has even taken place. Due to the patient-doctor confidentiality agreement, we may also never learn what was discussed between James Holmes and his campus psychiatrist, Dr. Lynn Fenton. Also, because of the gag order put into place by the judge, it would seem the government does not want anyone to know about what Holmes was studying at the University of Colorado. It would seem that he was involved in some breakthrough materials and it is possible that he was on the verge of something that could affect national security. It is not uncommon for the government to work with scientists covertly on experiments that are highly sensitive like in the case of Nazi scientists that were brought to America under the CIA project called Paperclip. It is also possible that Holmes was involved in a governmental program involving psychological topics and became a guinea pig or test subject for another purpose set forth by the government. Due to the materials Holmes was studying, it would make sense that he was already enrolled in the studies and would play the perfect role. This could also explain why Holmes became so distant from his friends and family prior to the attack. Although this is worth consideration, there are other possible motives in this case which seem to have a lot more credibility. Another obvious factor in the motive of the Colorado shooting is the debate on gun control. The crime took place just one week prior to a hearing that would decide if small arms and guns would be banned. The treaty was never signed, however, but other shootings have also taken place since then, and the topic has been discussed widely amongst the government. If it becomes a United Nations issue, however, it can threaten anyone in the world's right to bear arms, and would disarm the world making people defenseless against attacks, and would outlaw hunting as well. The ATF, a government agency, were responsible for top secret programs like Project Gunrunner and Operation Fast and Furious. In Operation Fast and Furious, ATF agents were responsible for selling guns to contacts so that they could trace them to higher profiled criminals, mainly members of Mexican cartels, so they could make more important arrests. Obviously, many of the near 2,000 guns were used in murders and violent crimes, including the murder of a Border Patrol officer. The Mexican government complains that they were not informed about the Fast and Furious operation. Mm -hmm. Did you authorize this operation and was President Calderon properly informed about it? Well, first of all, I did not authorize it. Uh, Eric Holder, the Attorney General, did not authorize it. He's been very clear that uh, our policy is to catch gun runners and put them into jail. Uh, so what he's done is he's assigned uh, a, uh, an IG, an Inspector General, to investigate what exactly happened so here. who authorized it? Well, we don't have all the facts. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, the uh, IG is in business. Uh, and you, were not even, facts. you were not even informed about it? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, this is a pretty big government, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the United States government. I've got a lot of moving parts. John Dodson, a federal agent, says what he was asked to do was beyond belief. You were intentionally letting guns go to Mexico. Yes, ma'am. I mean, the agency was. An alcohol, tobacco, and firearms senior agent assigned to this Phoenix office since 2010, Dodson's job is to stop gun trafficking across the border. Instead, he says he was ordered to sit by and watch it happen. Investigators call the tactic letting guns walk. In this case, it's into the hands of criminals who would use them in Mexico and the U.S. Dodson's bosses say that never happened. Now he's risking his job to go public. I'm boots on the ground here in Phoenix and telling you we've been doing it every day since I've been here. Here I am. Tell me I didn't do the things that I did. Tell me you didn't order me to do the things that I did. Tell me it didn't happen. Now you have a name on it and you have a face to put with it. Here I am. Someone. Now. Tell me it didn't happen. Agent Dodson and other insiders say the gun walking strategy was approved all the way to the Justice Department. The idea was to see where the guns ended up, build a big case, and take down a major cartel. And it was all kept secret from Mexico. ATF named the case Fast and Furious. Oh, 
surprised they have a bunch of cases. This surveillance video obtained by CBS News shows suspected drug cartel suppliers carrying boxes of weapons to their cars at a Phoenix gun shop. Those long boxes being loaded into the red car are AK-47 type assault rifles. He's out again, carrying another, appears to be five boxes of power case, power thing that would a crystal. So it turns out ATF not only allowed the guns to walk, they videotaped it. Documents show the inevitable result. The guns ATF let go began showing up at crime scenes in Mexico. And as ATF stood by, watching thousands of weapons hit the street, the Fast and Furious group supervisor noted the escalating Mexican violence. 958 killed in March 2010, the most violent month since 2005. The same email notes, our subjects purchased 359 firearms during March alone, including numerous Barrett 50 caliber rifles. Did you feel that ATF was partly perhaps to blame for the escalating violence in Mexico and on the border? Yes, ma'am. I even asked them if they could see the correlation between the two. The more that our guys buy, the more violence that we're having down there. Senior agents, including Dodson, told us they confronted their supervisors over and over. And what was the answer? What do they say? If you're going to make an omelet, you've got to scramble some eggs. 